Hello again. I hope until now, this S7 1200 tutorial was useful for you. We have learned bit logic operations. In this video, we're going to learn timer operations. The first timer is generate pulse timer. Then we'll do a simple exercise to learn how this timer work. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start learning timers. This is ladder symbol of generate pulse timer. This instruction is used to set an output for a program duration. Here is its first input. This timer will run, this will generate pulse, if the RLO at this input change to 1. Generally this block need a signal like this to generate a pulse. The second input, need a number as its preset time. CPU use 32 bits to store a time number, with 32 bits, we can store time up to 24 days, 20 hours, 31 minutes, 23 seconds, 64 7 milliseconds. This is the maximum time you can give to your pulse timer. Giving time is very easy. For example this time can be 2 days and 3 minute and 6 milliseconds. Timers need a data block to work correctly, like some bit logic instruction which need a bit memory to work. Now what is data block? Data block is a block which stores the parameters of this timer. It stores the parameters like how much is the preset time, and what is the status of the input and the status of outputs, so, this data block is a memory which stores timer parameters, and it makes that we can access this data in our program. So if use another timer, we need another data block such as DB2 or DB3. Ok, when this timer is activated, we'll have a pulse here for 2 seconds. Also if you want, you can store the current or elapsed time. It means, when the timer is started, this output will show us the current time, how much time it has already executed. Ok. To store this time, we need 32 bits. Here MD0 address is used, but what the meaning of MD0? Alright, do you remember this table in the second video? This table show us memory structure. Memory consist of some bytes. Each byte has 8 bits. From bit 0 to bit 7. We have used this format, to refer 1 bit in PLC memory or refer to input or output image memory. For a byte, we use letter M plus B, and then write its byte number. As you see, if we need 2 bytes, we insert W letter. Now we need 32 bits to store elapsed time. So we use D letter between M and its first byte number. So MD0 use byte 0 to byte 3 of PLC memory. An important point here is that, if we use MD0 for our timer, we must not use MW0, MB0, M0.6 or M1.4. Because these bits are in MD0, and we must not use them for another purpose. Thus the next free memory will be M4.0. For example if we have another timer, the next address which can be used, is MD4. Right? 
Now see this diagram. When we have a positive edge at start input, we'll have a pulse at timer output for 2 seconds. As you see if start input remain 1, after 2 seconds, we don't have another pulse until the next positive edge. See here, when the timer is on, it doesn't detect any positive edge, which can make the timer start from first. Pay attention here, if the start input change to 0, before 2 seconds, this timer continue its work, and generate a pulse for 2 seconds. Now let me show you a diagram for the ET output, which show elapsed time. When this timer generate a pulse at its first output, the ET output increase linearly. When elapsed time reach to preset time, if the RLO at start input be 1, this output will hold last time, until the RLO, at start input, change to 0. For next pulse, after preset time, the RLO is 0 at start input. So ET output back to 0 immediately after 2 seconds. Let's see this instruction in TIA software. From the instruction list, here, insert a pulse timer. Automatically, TIA wants to specify a data block for the inserted timer. Here, insert a name for this data block. OK. We can't connect a timer to the left line directly. So I insert a contact with M0.0 .0 address of memory. At the second input, we need time. The format of time is T letter, plus sharp sign, plus time, and its unit. Here, if you forgot to write T letter and the sharp sign, Tia adds them to your time automatically. Here I want to store elapsed time on PLC memory. I can't use MD0, because of this used memory, M0.0. Let's see this table again. M0.0 is here, in byte 0. I can't use MD0, because M0.0 is a bit of this address. But all bits of the MD1 are free. So I can use MD1 for the timer. So I write MD1. Now let me assign a tag for this address. Usually, try to define a tag for each address. Well, let's test this timer. When we use memory for a contact, you can right click on it and change its value as you see. When this contact change from 0 to 1, we have a pulse at its output for 10 seconds. Now pay attention here, here we can see used data blocks in our programs. Now. I have one data block which has been used for the timer. Now switch to function block language. As you see, FBD and ladder symbol of this timer are similar. Just the order of Q and ET output are exchanged. Alright, let's do an exercise, first try to use two pulse timers and write a program, to have two blinker indicators with two start and stop push buttons.
Well, you may want to see my program. First I insert two assignment instructions, respectively to the green and red lamps. Then I use two pulse timers. The green lamp will be on for 5 seconds, and another lamp 7 seconds, you can change these times. I want, when the start push button is pressed, in other word, after this push button give us a positive edge signal, the green lamp will be on for 5 seconds. At the end of this pulse, when the green lamp is going to be off, we have a negative pulse, and we want the state of red lamp change to on. So here, I use this negative pulse to turn on the red lamp for 7 seconds. Again, I can use the negative pulse of the red lump, to turn on the green lamp. Alright. Let's see what this program does. First, the green lamp will be on for 5 seconds, if the start push button is pressed. After that, the red lamp will be on for 7 seconds. And this cycle repeats again. To cut and stop this cycle, I must prevent to reach these three pulls to timers. For example, if I use start contact here, so when this push button is released, this pulse cannot reach to first timer. So it's make to stop this cycle. Pay attention, in this program, if we want to start this process and also continue it, we must press and hold start push button. Let me to use a set reset instruction with start and stop contact as you see. So instead to hold start push button, I can store and hold the start request at a bit memory. Now I use this bit, M0.0 .0 instead these I0.0 .0 address. Ok, now let me transfer this program to my virtual PLC. Now let's test this program with factory IO, I hope you have learned how to use the software at previous videos. As you see, when I press and release start push button, the green and red lights start to turn on and off. Similarly, I can test this program with my PLC. I've explained its necessary settings before. Here, two first output, are connected to red and green lamp in factory IO. Now let's have an overview of the program in FBD language, I just explain the green light network, others are similar. At first we have an OR logic with this branch. So FBD language use an OR instruction too. Then, with series arrangement we have, 
and logic. As you see, the FBD language use this and instruction too. Then in both language we have pulse timer and an assignment instruction. These programs have a same logic. May you prefer to use function block diagram instead of ladder. Alright, in next videos we'll continue learning other timer operations. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.